Hello, I'm Charlotte Collins and welcome to The Sherlock Show. We have a great show for you today with fashion, beauty, health, culture and chat. It is a real goodie. First up, it's panel with the team. We're sharing our favourite shopping picks and doing a little summer booze taste test. Later, Lou is joining me for a spring summer fashion debrief. We'll be assessing the very best Met Gala looks, our favourite new fashion finds, the coolest new brands to know and more. Nutritional therapist Gabriella Peacock is here to give us her top tips for resetting our bodies in time for summer. From sleep to energy levels, hormones to getting the glow, it is fascinating stuff and she has all the answers. Makeup artist Ashley Days is showing us a super simple but gorgeous everyday five minute look which should help refine that morning rush. And finally, the Sherlux team are sharing the books they're loving right now. But first, it's chat with Tor and Sherry. Hi both. Hello. Hi. Um, we're going to kick off by talking about the Sherlux Spring Fair, which launches, where are we? Tomorrow, Friday. Um, this is, well, it's the third, second spring, um, but it is our third big fair where we basically have brought together all of our favourite brands and offer discount codes to all our readers. It's, it's, brands. it's, it's amazing. It's, I was looking at it last night, yesterday mm -hmm. afternoon. There are some amazing deals on there. Like, and I honestly really think the best yeah. roster of brands that we've I, had. I agree, so I, agree mm -hmm. I agree, I um, agree. We wanted to share some picks mm -hmm. from the selection. So Tor, what is on your, your hit list? So number one are those really lovely bed sheets from Sarah Kay. Yeah. Um, we have some of her scallop uh, napkins we've got on our wedding list. And I just, I absolutely love them. Yeah. The, the quality is so nice. Uh, so, is it? Okay, that's yeah, that's and I, we're about to have one of our, um, our spare rooms in like a kind of a green and beigey like nice. tones. And I want the green scallop sheets. Nice. They also do really lovely quilts as well. Like, oh, yeah. Nice. I remember that. Oh. Uh, Georgie went to uh, there. To, to do a wedding gift list thing and mm. yeah, they're gorgeous. Anyway, uh, what else, sorry? Um, some trunks. Yes. Um, for Tim for his birthday. Nice. I, I love a good pair of trunks. There's some really nice pink ones I thought were really smart. And there was also... There was also the Neven Noor dress. Oh my God, I love Neven Noor, yes. Yeah, they yeah. actually have. I was honestly looking through her Instagram yesterday and thinking, mm. God, these dresses are so pretty. So pretty, yeah. so pretty, yeah. And it's 25% off, so, so good. incredible, so good. So incredible so good. savings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sherry, I'm going to come to you. What is, what's on your hit list? Well, I was looking at the children's wear because a lot of my friends and people that I know, everyone's pregnant at the moment. Yeah, everyone's is, pregnant, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> which is lovely. So um, I saw some really lovely bits on Beatrice and Bee. They do like these amazing rompers, little dungarees. They're so sweet, like newborns. Yeah. And then I also saw by um, Matilda and Grace, they do little hairbands and like bows, like Liberty Print for little girls sweet. it's really really sweet it's actually if you've got a like something to buy presents for i mean now is absolutely mm, so time great i think i, I, agree. Last time. I yeah. agree um i think the fashion is honestly unreal the fashion also so it keeps on going i, I was it's like so many brands like, literally, amazing I was, I was just saying to rich off camera he was saying who's in it, and honestly like piece of white with nothing mm. underneath cozy and co if only if i mean literally all of our mm. all those small mm. brands that we love that we champion that you know are just mm -hmm. so cool yeah are all in there yeah. so those are my picks i can't wait it's saturday morning i'm going to sit down on my laptop and do some serious definitely yeah. Yeah. well we've got lives going on across the whole weekend georgie's doing a live um, with some of our favorite brands tomorrow i'm doing one on instagram on saturday morning um addison ross is in there i mean literally so oh, the brands right. keep coming don't they yeah. so um do check that out and uh I don't have the URL in front of me, but it'll be in the show notes below, and that's where you can just go on and shop all of the all of the picks. What fun! Bring it on. Um, okay, we ran a feature on site last week about career advice, best tips for a successful career. So we thought we would share. Oh well, I'm going to ask you your best career advice that you've ever received. Well, let's start with that. That's what I'm going to start with. Tour. Sure. <laughs> I can't remember like being told this. Like you, this is really good advice, but it's something I think is kind it's of good advice. good advice. So I, it might kind of cross over into a second okay. point. But I think having a voice and having an opinion and not being afraid to ask questions, mm. I think A is a good way to learn and kind of absorb information, mm. but also kind of to show interest and confidence. And I think that is essential. And I think don't, if, if for example, if you're in a big meeting, don't be afraid to ask questions because mm. more often than not, everyone's thinking the same thing. And actually you're going to learn so much by the information you get back. Yeah. And mm. Just be proactive and yeah. don't be afraid to have an opinion and express it. I think. Yeah, I so agree. I've That's always a good one. I've really always really watched Georgie do that actually. She will always say, sorry mm. this is too much, but I have to ask. That's so like, true. I, it's really cool seeing that from the top. Yeah. 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 Doesn't matter what stage you're at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sherry, what's the best career advice you've received? Uh, I think it was my old manager actually. She once told me just to utilize everyone in the company and don't be afraid to ask loads of questions for people that aren't necessarily in your 
department. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so just like yeah. learn from different aspects and also try and get a mentor if you can. Yeah. Mm. Even if there's not, you know, a specific mentoring scheme where you are, just ask someone like, would you mind, you know, giving me 15 minutes once a month just to, just yeah. so I find out what you do. So beneficial. I um, I, I interviewed Stephen Bartlett for, um, yeah, Ooh. Diary of CEO earlier this week for Sherlock's podcast, which is coming soon. And I asked him if he'd had any mentors and he said, um, he's quite like, um, kind of likes to defy convention a bit. So he was like, no, I always say to people that the internet like is your mentor. Like, they're, like a, a, the whole internet is there. It's basically free. So that can kind of provide you more information, which I kind of, yeah, I'm with you. I thought, okay, quite a nice idea. But actually, I think a lot of people, maybe people who do feel more conventional themselves as well, are like, I think yeah. I'd really benefit from somebody really like you know somebody in a position that you want to get to you're actually giving you more kind yeah. of and also like this yeah. is great and on so many levels and uh, yeah. you know wealth information but like the time and value you can get from actually sitting with yeah. someone mm -hmm. face to face and like I think is you can't really beat that I so. agree definitely but sorry, anyway. sorry Stephen no yeah sorry Stephen but <laughs> it's a good place to start start Absolutely. the internet okay. yeah. um I'm trying to think what mine is oh try, I always say the same thing which is which is actually from Ben always but Ben always says to me trust the process mm -hmm. and, always, and I say sorry I say this all the time but so what do you mean like, just, so that, like so whenever and particularly when I was a lot younger I, you know if you're trying to run before you can walk like all of those things or you know having a kind of green-eyed monster moment trust the process so and obviously so it's is a it bit about like manifest is it about being patient it's about being patient it's about trusting that if you put the work in and that you know it's not about sitting back and chilling and hoping mm. for the best but just trusting that if you kind of continue on the path that's right for you and work hard, mm -hmm. then mm. the things that you want will come your way, slash the right path will present itself to you. I like that. Mm. Like positive affirmation. Mm. Exactly, mm. yeah. yeah. Um, what is the best career advice you would give? Yours is sort of a bit oh, of both, but do you have a different piece of advice? I may be, maybe if you, if you, you start the show. Sorry? Um, I would say if you're just starting out or looking for your first job, really don't get too hess up about internships. I think there's such a pressure to have like, you know, 10 on your list and you've done this in the summer and done that over the holidays, but don't worry too much about that. I think mm. just show me you're proactive and doing something on your own, whether that's like a blog or like having a really cool Instagram or just something on the side mm. is, yeah, just as yeah. important. And as actually on the, on the subject of like starting kind of out or like early days in your career, I remember mm -hmm. something we spoke about once and it was like, just throw yourself in mm. and like don't say no to anything. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. if you're asked to go to an event, like go. Yeah. And just do it and don't complain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just get on with it and put yourself out there. Yeah. Just say Definitely. yes to everything. Just say yes. Yeah. Obviously, and like, I always caveat yeah. it with, like, you know, don't be taking advantage of it. But, <laughs> yeah. but I'm with you. Just say yeah. yes to every. Be a yes person. Yeah, 100%. exactly. Yeah. yeah, I so agree. Yeah. 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 Really good advice. Yeah. I also think, um, it's, as you were saying that, I was thinking it's true. No, I, like, obviously, like everyone, <laughs> I was very het up with internships. I don't think anyone's asked me what internships I did <laughs> in a very long time. No, but so you, it's, it's a foot in the door. Agreed. Yeah, and sure. you might not be here today if you hadn't done this. Internship. Totally true. Yeah. But I agree with you now. There are so many more, like, digital, mm. kind of self motivation, like, easier ways yeah. to build, like, a portfolio of things you're interested in and proof that you can mm. do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. agreed. All right, um, we're going to talk about summer drinks now, purely for the reason that I gratuitously threw this in, because why not try some summer drinks? Summer's here, the weather's improving, mm -hmm. I've got open taste sandals on. <laughs> so let's, I thought, let's share the drinks that we that are our go-tos this summer. We talked a bit on the podcast this week, didn't we, about mm. barbecues beginning, starting to be outside. Yes. So what better way to celebrate? We've got our own little makeshift bar we over do. here. Uh, Sherry, I'm going to come to you first. What is your go-to drink of the summer? So, I do love a margarita. Well, come on, you can whip it up as we talk. Okay, so, what's, so what's in your, your margarita? This is actually new. So, Lies, which has brought out a new range of non-alcoholic tequilas. Mm. And oh, it's not alcoholic No, no, non-alcoholic, yeah. Both of you guys with the yeah. non-alcoholic. Okay. So, it's kind of like tequila mezcal vibe. So, if you love something a bit Mexican, this yeah. is a really good version. I wouldn't say it tastes like alcohol, but it still gives you that kind of grown-up feel. Please, can I try that on it? So just, if you just pour yeah. it into a little thing with ice, thank you. Only because I really, Wait. really love tequila and I'd just love to know what that tastes like before it has anything else. That's thank really you. intriguing. Do you want to try something? Um, I'll wait. Are you going to mix the, it? Yeah, yeah, I'll mix I'll, it. I'll so mix go on, Sherry, what's your, what's your key to a good margarita? So, well, I feel like it's quite hard to do one Ooh. without using actual alcohol. Mm. But my one that I've tried is to mix it with just some normal soda water, really fresh, yeah. and then a bit of lime. That's all we need. Mm. Put perhaps some grapefruit in there. Yeah. If you can find it. I couldn't find it this morning in Sainsbury's. But we'll go with lime. lime is still that is sorry. That is so interesting mm. because it tastes exactly like tequila, but without the yeah. alcohol. Yeah, it's got, got a like fieriness to it. Is it chilly yeah. or something? Oh, perhaps. No, no. It's got like a like a heat. Yeah. 
what's it? Maybe that's here? just what having fake tequila does. I haven't heard about that. Do they do they only do tequila or do they do other things? No, they too? do loads. Everything, vodka, gin. I really like that. It's really good. It's quite expensive. Yeah. It's about twenty five pound per bottle. Okay. Um, but worth it if you yeah. want something that's a little bit more mm. elevated. Yeah, really nice. It also looks alcoholic. Which yeah, I think is yeah. quite cool. Like I so, think I think it's quite placebo-y. Like I can imagine feeling like yeah, I'm quite, yeah, quite merry on this. Yeah, thank Ooh. you. And then just delicious. some some do lime. You, do you want to try one of these? No, I'll, I will have cherry, please. A, a little a little top up with a squeeze of lime. Thank you. Where's my mic? There oh my go. god, it does taste like tequila. Oh, lovely. I'm thank gonna put you. the whole thing in there. Don't just go for it. Fresh. It really tastes like tequila, nice. doesn't it? Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Thank you. I'm kind of into that. Hang on. Yeah, it's really nice. It's really fresh. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, you've really converted to me. I love yeah, that. All right, sorry. I love that too. I, I love that. You've really got a non-alcoholic. I was going to bring in, I'm also a massive fan of, kind of similar to this though, it's, um, I love a really good quality vodka. I love black cow vodka. Um, it's made with like, mm. uh, no, no, but it's, it's No, really, I just really can't, I'm just a tequila girl. Yeah, fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but I thought I'd do be a bit different and actually I brought in something, something non-alcoholic just to mix it up. Um, it's Mother Root, which is a really delicious, um, it's made with ginger, apple cider vinegar and honey. It sounds amazing. So if you smell it, you can mm. share our shit. Have you tasted it before? Yeah, I have. Oh, yeah. you have, fine. So you know. It and is it good for you? Because it's got like good benefits. Thank you. Well, yeah, because apple cider vinegar is mm. really good for your tummy and digestion. Ooh. Oh yeah, that tastes like something that would settle your stomach. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. really nice. Um, I'm going to put a bit in here. Yes, please do. Yeah, and nice. Actually, nice. Yeah, a bit of ice. And what do you normally do? Add some... I add a bit of tonic. Okay. Um, because... Oh, my God. Nice. Sorry. I... I love tonic. Yeah, I like tonic mm, too. Fresh. Mm. Yeah. And and it, it's your tonic of choice. Schwe you know, yeah, Schwe no, Schwe 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 yeah, I know. I really don't like uh, other ones. I'm really fussy. Um, <laughs> Most people like who are fussy fresh. don't go for Schweppes. <laughs> No, I mean, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm mean, sorry, this, I like I, I find Fever Tree too, almost too watery. No, that's totally fine. I mean, just more water, just so you can like, okay. you have to kind of mix it so you get the flavour. I'm really excited the flavor. Thanks. Show you to try one of these? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. I haven't tried it with a uh, toilet water. Oh my god, toilet is so nice. Isn't it? It's you so could actually refreshing. Add some booze into that. I do. You could. <laughs> it works well. <laughs> it works well, there we go. I Trust me. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I'm going to give you a little I bit I guess it's like a lemony, spicy ginger beer. Ooh, yeah, exactly. But yeah. I think the kind of the apple, you need to kind of mix it a bit. The apple cider vinegar really adds like a tang. Yeah. Ooh, that tastes, it's it tastes alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah, it's got and a bit of a And at the end of the day, sometimes when I, when I don't want oh, alcohol, so I don't want water, mm. I want something that's going to like zing my taste buds. Mm. Yeah, do you know what? Because that's like, mm. I yeah. at the end of the day, when I need like a really cold Diet Coke, this will be a much Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and it's lovely. And they just, they've just brought out one that's called marmalade, a marmalade switchel, Ooh. which is more like orangey. Okay. But it's got, it's more kind of bitter, so. Okay. Depends what you taste Good to know. Like. Sherry, into like. it? Really nice. Yeah, it's ginger beery. Yeah. If you like something a bit more like heaty, spicy, yeah. mm -hmm. very refreshing. So where do you like find it? Lot. You can buy it online. Mm. Um, I think you can buy it probably right in some select supermarkets, but okay. if you buy direct from their website, Perfect. we'll yeah. put a link in. It's, it's still a very small brand. Okay. So. Nice. Yeah. Uh, well, nice to be supporting a few small brands. So I'm sorry, I'm going to oh, have to I, ask you to. Gonna, thank oh, you. I'm just going to sit back with my tequila. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, it's time for the booze. Um, so I mean, my nice. drink of choice. My, it does look nice, doesn't it? My summer drink this of choice is always rosé. Um, this is born rosé. Oh no, you're going to have to hit the lid. <laughs> Step one. I promise it was not alcoholic. <laughs> Step one, the lid needs to come off. Um, so Born it's a very Rose. Chic are, it's very, it's very chic. chic. Born Rose um, are based in Barcelona. They're basically trying to take the kind of faff and pretension out of thank you so much, out of wine tasting and out of out of wines. And basically saying if you want to buy one rose this summer that everybody's gonna love, mm -hmm. this is it. So I haven't tried it yet. I just thought we'll try it together. I love it. Yeah, sorry. We've also got a, there's a sparkling one, maybe we'll maybe we'll Try that afterwards. Um, nice and pale. I love nice and pale. Well. Good start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Oh wow, that's a good mm. rosé. Oh, it's quite fruity. It is fruity, but not sweet. Not it's sweet. It's that's definitely so nice. it's dry, yeah. but I say it's quite fruity. That is I that like is it. to me. Nice. Sat around the summer. Oh, it's summer. summer in a glass. Very I think like I could be sitting in Barcelona. Yeah, like shut your eyes. <laughs> having some chorizo. I'm there. Yeah. yeah, I'm there. I love it. Mm, These are all lovely. Really nice. This was a much more eye-opening experiment than I thought it would be. Mm. <laughs> I thought we were just going to drink a lot. So we great. Can we, can we just start work off? And yeah, no, I think we'll probably do that. Let's wrap this up so that we can just finish these glasses. <laughs> um, all right, thank you so much, guys. That was so much fun. Next up, I can't drink all day because Lou is joining me for a fashion catch-up. Don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Daisy Reed, and on this week's Lux Girl Show, I'm joined by Montana Brown, Eliza Batten, and Sapna Rao for another episode of the Lux Girl Group Chat. 
First up, the Lux Girls show us how to recreate four seriously cool spring summer looks from Instagram. From a mega two piece to the perfect day to night dress that is giving us major holiday vibes, it's great inspo. Next up, the founder of July Child Jewelry is here to show us what a typical day in her life is like as one of the coolest jewelry business owners right now. Finally, from a morning gym class to an afternoon pick me up, I'm next up in our Money Diaries series. See what I spend in a day. I think we can officially say that a new season is here. So we thought we'd do a little bit of a fashion catch up, round up, all the things that we're loving right now. Um, we're gonna start by talking, of course, about the Met Gala. It was Monday, we don't, we don't wanna dwell too much. It's a few days old, but who was your best dressed? It has to be Hailey Bieber in both outfits, I would yeah. say. Saint Laurent, she just looked phenomenal. Have you watched, she put on YouTube yesterday afternoon, um, the process of- Oh no, it, oh I love God. watching those. It is, I mean, 10 minutes of heaven. <gasps> she tries it on, she, they show like when, the, when she first tries on the dress and she's got like her glasses on, her hair and pants, yeah. and she still looks just like, Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. It's so annoying. She's just incredible. Yeah. And I think she's really, the older that she gets, the, like, the more she is blossoming yeah. into just such a beautiful woman. She um, also never does anything like too weird or experimental. No. Like it's always safe, but still really beautiful. Yeah. And I, was, I thought as well, like, obviously the dress was stunning, but I loved that her makeup was mm. really minimal. Like it just kind of looked like her normal everyday yeah. look, which is, I mean, obviously when you look like that, you can I do know. that, but just stunning. Amazing. And that second look. Oh my god! Oh my god! I mean, I mean that's supermodel stuff. Right? Yeah, I mean the 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 body, the tan. I mean, you could kind of put anything on top of that, but exactly. yeah, the little sequins were just. I'm not sequins I mean, like diamonds. Was diamonds like a diamante bra? Yeah, yeah. She just looks sensational. I just dead. I know. Literally dead at her. She's incredible. Um, Lauren Harry was my Laura Harry. Sorry, was my pick of um, the Met Gala. Yeah. She wore H and M. Isn't that amazing? How cool is that? Yeah. And I mean, there's been a few. Do you remember Topshop did a table yeah. one? It's like there's been a, there's been a bit of. Um, I think H&M did the Jenners, actually, now I'm saying it, a year or so ago. Oh. Anyway, there's a bit of high street infiltration there, okay. but um, I thought that they got the theme so, you know, it was yeah. supposed to be this Gilded Age thing, so they nodded to the theme, but without being like, I don't, I don't, I want to see like some sort of replicable fashion. I want to see some replicable fashion yeah. as well as, you know, something that's on theme, and that was kind of, it straddled yeah, both really well. totally. So beautiful. Um, speaking of her, so the next thing we're going to talk about is our Instagram of the week. Who looked the most stylish on Instagram this week? Yeah. And you have also picked Laura Harry. I know, how weird is that? How weird? Um, yeah, I saw this post on via Hoster, and I actually think it's an old picture, mm. but she just looked so incredible. That outfit, to me, is just like everything you want for kind of summer mm -hmm. inspo. Just so relaxed. It's kind of a silk... Not really like a slip dress. Mm. I don't know how you even describe that that shape. Just like a simple dress. Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't think that's the technical term. No. <laughs> no. Um, and I just love the shape. And then she just had really simple jewelry, amazing sunglasses, and just looked really just like nonchalant, just mm. throw on, like really easy, yeah. just so chic. I just love her. She's, She's amazing. So cool. I, do you, did you watch Hollywood last no. year? Okay, so she was in Hollywood, which you have to watch. It's amazing. Maybe I watched one or two and I was like, this isn't for me. I didn't that. That was well. Yeah. Anyway, go back and watch it. She's incredible. I don't okay. know if I've seen her in anything since. No. I, maybe I'm just missing it, but. but yeah, she's very cool. Watch. Amazing okay. style. Um, okay, so my Instagram of the week is Leonie Han. Always Leonie Han, but she was in LA, much like you oh. last week. Um, and she did two like really contrasting yeah. looks. So the first is, and I'm gonna come back to Colt Gaia in a minute, but she was wearing this insane green feathered mini Colt Gaia dress. I mean, pure Hollywood fabulous. Whenever you say green and feather, I just immediately think of Leonie. That's like so yes, her, very look, her. Isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And it's not that kind of really dark Bottega green. Yeah. It's a kind of pea green. It's really mm -hmm. pretty. Um, and then the other one was something completely different. She was on the beach and she's wearing an oversized blazer on the beach. Yeah. And it was just a really like good example of how you can infuse even your holiday. It's quite you actually, because yeah, the yeah, holiday orders, you know, she's not just gone all boho and yeah. all, you know, she's she's stuck to her tailoring guns and yeah. um, just worn it on the beach and it, it really works. Really yeah, cool. and I think that like, yeah, with some like denim shorts and a cap, yeah. like, yeah, it's a different way, a different approach to tailoring, exactly. which is so nice. You're not gonna do it in like Spain in August, no. but for now, yeah. really cool. Um, okay, follow of the week. Who are you loving on Instagram right now? Oh, I've forgotten who I put. You have put, uh, well, first Matilda Gola. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, Matilda Gola, sorry. She is so beautiful. Mm. Her hair is so thick yeah. and shiny. It's so luscious. Oh this isn't about fashion, is it? No. no. Just I mean, I also love her style. Um, it's like very, very my look, mm. like very refined, a 
like a very clean color palette. She's got that Loewe tank, which everybody is yeah, wearing. Yeah, it's cool, that tank. Um, yeah. And the Chanel swimsuit, which also is yeah, real. Yeah, really cool. That looks. Loewe tank's a very tanky tank, isn't it? It's got like yeah. a real swoop here. Yeah. Again, um, with the technical terms. Yeah. Anyway, I just love her feed and her aesthetic. Yeah. And it's just giving me good vibes. Um, okay, well, mine is... Olympia Marie, who is, she really reminds me of you actually. She's got a similar her. hair. Um, she is the head of women's wear at J. Crew. And I mean, J. Crew are really good at hiring people who wear their brand so well, make their brand look so cool. I'm yeah. obviously you know, referencing Jenna Lyons here, but um, Olympia has this really cool approach to tailoring and to that kind of classic preppy look yeah. and layers kind of denim shirts with white blazers and white jeans and all so well. It yeah. feels really J. Crew, but in like a really cool, refreshing, yeah. authentic way. She's like the grown-up girl boss you want to be when you're older, you know? There's a way to do preppy that and modern, which is really hard to get right. Yeah. And I think you can go a little bit too like old school yeah. preppy vibes. But yeah, making it, giving it like a modern twist. Totally. And she does that so perfectly. It's not Charlotte York vibes, is it? It's because yeah. she's got the kind of disheveled hair, loads yeah. of gold jewellery, a kind of, you know, slightly androgynous stance and yeah. take on it. Like it just really works. And I think also like she doesn't wear loads of bright colours mm. and prints, but it doesn't feel boring yeah, either. Agreed. And the, yeah, the way that she layers stuff, just she's so cool. And that's a real skill. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, next up, designer piece of the week. I'm going to go first okay. because I've already talked about Colt Gaia. I've actually bought this dress. Have you? Yes, you were away for a week. You've missed a lot. Normally so, we go through all of our purchases. I know, I know. Wow. But it's been like nine days. Um, so this, it might look awful on. Okay. Keep you updated. Um, but this is a Colt Gaia dress with, I mean, just the most unbelievable sleeves I wow. have ever seen. I saw it and thought, I had to have it. It's... On the model, it cuts here, which is already okay. quite long on her, so I suspect it's going to be like a very dodgy here on okay. me. Would you I, take it up? I think it needs to be like here, like yeah, super yeah. short. It's quite plunging, but then it's got these, I mean, magnificent Amazing. sleeves. It's so, they and, are nailing dresses. And what right occasion would you wear it for? Holiday, I've got a few holidays. Okay. Yeah. Not not like So like dinner, dinner out? Like dinner this, out. This okay. Din yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got some kind of party holidays on okay. the horizon. I think it's that. Um... What is your designer piece of the week? Mine is a blouse from Doen. So when I was in LA, I went to visit the store and I've never been in a store mm. before. And oh, it's just so pretty. Yeah. And the, yeah, the stores are amazing. Tried on a couple of pieces. Felt a little bit milkmaid in a few of okay. them. But yeah, that, that is, I think that, the that is their yeah. vibe. It's that kind of prairie chic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the blouse that I tried on is kind of got a square neckline but then it's got like a, a frill around it yeah. and amazing sleeves just really easy throw on mm. super pretty just love it really they do nice. such pretty pieces yeah. Don't they? yeah and and like it, it's obviously higher than yeah. high street but it's not crazy crazy yeah. expensive so it feels like a nice treat and something a little bit more unique yeah agreed available in Nettie Porter we should yeah. say um high street piece of the week we've both gone for mango I mean this is the time of year where mango really comes into its own yeah it? it's so so good yeah. so mine is um a bag which is very, very similar to Dragon Diffusion. Um, someone on Instagram actually messaged me saying, the, the mango bag is back in stock. <laughs> um, Sarah Corbett Winder yep. got it last summer and it's like a dark brown weave, a, a basket bag, but I guess a little bit more modern, maybe a bit more mm. city appropriate say, than a office. normal mm. um, basket bag. And 79 pounds. And the Dragon Diffusion one I think is about Three fifty. Mm, so, yeah. so a good high street dupe. A dupe. Okay, I think you should buy it and just put your mind at rest. Yeah, with me it. too. Um, okay, so I've gone for a mango dress. Um, we've actually got a photo of Monique wearing this dress, who looked so I mean, insane so in this. So gorgeous. I mean, she was it's incredible. Exactly, but it's just such. They've got. A few, I actually clicked on another dress first, and then I was like, no, I'm going to talk about the Monique one. But yeah. they've got a variety of really great kind of cream knitted sleeveless. Yeah kind of I guess it's a shift like yeah. type shape um, and I just think so easy so chic with flats I mean yeah. it's so great you know, I love a cream knitted dress I this do time too. of year mm. there's loads of crochet ones as well that are, are around but yeah. if maybe crochet is a little bit too far then a cream knitted dress is perfect yeah there's some crochet ones but you sort of need something underneath which is a bit yeah. complicated this but one nice with like a blazer over the top yeah. as well like, and so this nice. one's got a really cool like little sort of cap sleeve detail anyway it's really chic it's kind of like that Chloe like kind exactly. of shape for really nice. exactly um, 
okay, finally, a brand to know. And also this has worked out really fortuitously that we're both, I think, are you wearing your I brand am. to know? Great, go on, yes. hit me. So mine is a brand called Ceci, mm -hmm. um, which is a small independent brand who specialise in shirts and cottons. And this shirt is from them. And I just love it. It's so comfortable. It's a really good shape. It's that. a really good colour. It's nice and light. Blue as well. Mm. Um, and they also do like boxer shorts. And yeah, I love it. Loads okay. of colours. It's really nice. I'm going to talk about being a brand that you could basically give the exact same description to. Um, but this is Wera, W-O-E-R-A. Uh, my trousers are from there. And also a shirting brand. They're yeah. a Greek brand, actually. Um, and I saw these online and they've got this incredible split hem here and I just felt absolutely... Do they come with a matching top? Them. There is a matching shirt as well. Yeah. But I feel like you can just match it with... Yeah, I'll probably wear a white shirt with it. I think nice. that would be when it's a little warmer. Um, but, I mean, just my perfect holiday trousers. I literally yeah, so, so good. Much. So, so comfy. So comfy. Elasticated waist. Oh, yeah. Heaven. Pockets. Heaven. I know. Sorted. Um, all right. Well, that was our fashion catch up. Lovely, yeah. lovely to catch up. So nice. Um, okay. Well, everything that we have talked about will, of course, be linked in the notes below. Next up, I'm joined by nutritional therapist Gabriella Peacock to talk all things getting ready for summer. But first, the Sherlock's team share the books they are loving right now. Hi, my name is Patricia Dwyer. I'm a content creator and Sherlock contributor, and this is the book I'm loving at the moment. So this book is Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. So Beautiful World, Where Are You? is a story of four people, two girls who are best friends and um, two boys, one of whom is a friend, one of whom is a, a new love interest. And it just sort of chronicles the relationships. One of the girls is going through a breakup. One of the girls has had a bit of a, um, a breakdown and moved away, met somebody new and was going through that. I just love Sally Rooney's books because you really get into the character, um, all the characters. When I finished it, I felt like I um, was saying goodbye to friends. Um, and there's just so much of it that is very reminiscent of the way all of our minds work. Um, you know, the, the what ifs, the missed opportunities because you're not ready to, to face certain conversations, the overthinking, which I am very good at. I just think it's a really good one and I would definitely recommend and cannot wait for the next Sally Rooney book to come out. Hello, I'm Polly, Sherlock's fashion broadcaster and the book that I have loved recently is The Five by Hallie Rubenhold, which tells the stories of the five women who were murdered by Jack the Ripper. It sounds kind of morbid, but actually rather than it being about the murders themselves, it's about the women's lives prior to that happening. Historically, they've just been kind of known as five prostitutes, which is basically um, actually incorrect. They really weren't simply just that. And it's very interesting to hear the kind of context of Victorian life and what might have led them to kind of meet such a grisly ending. Each of these women obviously had lives, had husbands, had children. It's, I think, really important to hear their, about their lives because the focus historically has just been on Jack the Ripper and who he might have been. So fascinating book and I would really, really recommend it. Hi, my name's Heather Steele. I'm managing lifestyle editor at Sheerlux and the book I'm loving right now is One Day I Shall Astonish the World by Nina Stibb, who's the author behind Love Nina, which loads of people really, really like. Uh, and yeah, this new book that came out at the beginning of the year is just as good as her other books. It's basically set in the current time and it focuses on Susan, who's been married to Roy for 30 odd years and she's got a really good friendship with someone called Norma and the whole book is about her relationships with everybody in her life, including her daughter, who's suddenly sort of arrived back at the home to live for a little while. And it's about her sort of coming to this realization that even though she thought she had a really good life, actually things probably aren't as amazing as they could have been, especially in the initial stages of the book with her relationship with Roy, her husband, who's starting to really wind her up after 30 years of marriage. Um, but like all Nina's books, it's so so funny as well as having that core heart to it and yeah haven't quite finished it yet but so far I'm really really enjoying it. I'm reading Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmin. It's about Elizabeth Zott, a chemist who makes the unusual transition into becoming a TV chef with a very unusual original trail 
blazing approach to cooking. It's set in 1960s California, and if you loved Where'd You Go, Bernadette, I think you'll really, really enjoy this book. It's, it's funny, it's observant, it's a real page turner. You'll laugh out loud, you'll nod along at some wry observations. I'm halfway through, I'm really enjoying it. I don't know where it's going, um, so I would really recommend it. Hi, I'm Sherry, Sheer Lux's junior writer, and the book I've been loving recently is Hair House by Sally Hinchcliffe. It's a really dark and mysterious book and definitely one for you if you like really dark fairy tales. It's about a woman who moves to Scotland and she's left an all-girls school under really mysterious circumstances. We don't know what's happened, but it doesn't look good. She moves into her house, a really dilapidated, rundown place, and at first she's really happy, but as she lives there further and further, she realises that something's happened at the house and there are rumours in the local neighbourhood, rumours about witchcraft, local men going mad, and we don't know what has happened, but we know it's bad. Um, it's really beautifully written, it's quite thrilling in parts, and yeah, great if you want something a bit dark, something a bit different, a bit mysterious and mystical. Now, if you also can't believe that summer is just around the corner, then you will be as thrilled as I am to welcome my next guest. Gabriella Peacock, nutritional therapist and all-round wellness guru, is here to share easy to follow tips and tricks on how to prepare ourselves in terms of nutrition, energy, sleep, and more, so we get into summer feeling our absolute best. Gabriella, welcome. It's so lovely to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. Again. You look like a beacon of health, um, <laughs> so I'm very interested to hear everything you have to say. Um, and we, we should say from the get-go, this isn't about you know, summer bodies, losing weight. It's just Absolutely about not. feeling good as the season approaches, isn't it? Absolutely. Feeling good in your skin, feeling good within your body. Yes. And, you know, you want to do that before the summer. Don't we all? <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so you have five key principles for summer. feeling your best, things we can put into practice now. Where are we? Beginning of May to kind of fill our best. Uh, plenty of time. Plenty of time <laughs> over the next few months. Um, so we're going to start with eating because obviously you're a, you're a nutritionist so kind of what are your what are your key principles around eating what can we be doing over the coming weeks and months to feel our best from the inside out so i will be sharing my five kind of main tips the first one would definitely be set a bit of an eating window we are we are overeating we eat a lot and we eat for long periods of time and actually what i find within my practice is making your eating window a little bit shorter perhaps practice bit of intermittent fasting has been really really helpful and it has numerous health benefits now I have to say I really don't like the word fasting it is really not about not eating it's about just restricting you know your eating window and don't, just don't eat all day long so what I've been doing with a lot of my patients is the 16-8 method mm -hmm. of intermittent fasting when you obviously don't eat for 16 hours you know part of those 16 hours you're always sleeping <laughs> um, and then you eat in an eight hour eating window mm -hmm. and you just go give your system and your digestion a bit of a break and it's been shown I mean the research it's incredible on um, on general kind of health you know, it's really health balancing also very much longevity supporting which is really interesting. Yeah. It cleanses our body and cleanses our cells. So definitely, um, definitely, a bit of intermittent fasting going in and out is really helpful. What kind of changes might you notice from doing it? I mean, will, as well as the kind of health benefits, will it help you sleep better? I and mean, what kind of things can you expect to, to feel? Absolutely. I mean, but as little as a week or two, you will notice that you'll start sleeping better. Your energy levels will be nice and balanced as well. It doesn't feel more very logic by just reducing, mm. you know, you, you know, the time you eat actually really helps with your energy levels and it re really does. Um, I'm sure you would say that we should be eating a, a very healthy, balanced <laughs> diet anyway, but I mean, does it work just sort of kind of keeping your existing diet and just truncating it? Well, it depends what your existing well, as diet is. As long as your existing <laughs> diet isn't existing just diet a load of takeaways. Is, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I'm really not about big restrictions. It's not about it. Every dietary plan I would put my patients on, they, it needs to be sustainable you obviously need to focus on eating, you know, relatively healthily. But even by just reducing this, you know, having the shorter eating mm. window would be would be very beneficial. And then around it, you try to eat as well as you can. Yeah, that makes total sense. Okay, um, for each of your five uh, tips, we're going to recommend some supplements because, yeah. of course, that's what you do. Um, so what else can you do to kind of aid your digestive system supplement-wise? So for this kind of particular, for, for the intermittent fasting, what I find it's really helpful is fibre. Because fiber, we don't have enough fiber in our diet. Most of the British population eat very low, um, very low fiber, have very low fiber intake. So fiber, it's really helpful. Um, 
I like uh, soluble fiber because you can mix it in water and drink it before your main meals. Um, so it nicely balances your blood sugar levels and help with those cravings you may have, okay. you may have for foods. Okay, nice. And you've got you've got a hair supplement in your range. I do, I do. It's called Feel Great Fiber. Feel Great Fiber. <laughs> I mean, we we all need that, don't we? Um, okay. Second tip: boosting your energy levels. I mean. Yes. God, it's, I think everybody's complaining all the time about how mm. sluggish they feel at the moment, how tired. I mean, we were chatting before and it's, we've all spent months over the last yeah. few years kind of in our homes. What can we do to feel more energized? What easy steps can we take? So energy, it's, it's a very interesting one because it's actually really, really simple. Our energy levels will reflect directly on how we're eating. So we just need to make sure when we're eating, we're balancing our blood sugar levels as much as possible because if your blood sugar levels are bouncing up and down, your energy levels will become very erratic, which, which is horrible. You know, you will have a boost, but mm. you will also have very quick dips. So with regards to energy, really focus on meal composition, what you eat. You know, it's very tempting to eat nice and refined carbohydrates, you know, have a lovely toast in the morning. Yes, but, yes. <laughs> but it's really important, for example, to have a protein with it as well because if you mix carbohydrate and protein together, it will release the sugars into your bloodstream much slower. Therefore, your energy levels will be nice and stable. Okay. So really important. The blood sugar level thing. I mean, obviously, we all know that if we have a chocolate bar or mm. whatever, the, the obvious things that make it spike, refined yeah. sugar, you know, refined carbohydrates. But are there other kind of things that we might be eating if, you know, I think of things like juices, right, that can really spike your blood sugar. What, you know, what should you maybe avoid that could be doing that without you really knowing about it? Well, as you said, anything, anything sugary, but it doesn't have to be obvious no. as, you know, as a piece of pastry or, or chocolate. It could be very easily, you know, juice drinking on empty stomach. Yeah. Sadly, with, um, with blood sugar, you, you never win. If you spike your blood sugar levels, you will feel incredible for 20 minutes, yeah. but you know, 20 it. minutes later, you'll be yeah. on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really important, any kind of sugar. And again, I'm not really against sugar, as long as you're nice and balanced throughout the day. If you have any kind of sugar, for example, for example, some juice, even green juice is quite sugary, mm. always have it with your main meal, okay. never have it on empty stomach. Yeah. Always make sure with sugars you have a protein in your stomach first. Okay, makes sense. I've learned that the hard way. I've had to quit juice, actually. <laughs> um, we, uh, also, we should touch on exercise activity. I mean, moving is essential to uh, having good course, energy levels as well. Right? Absolutely, yeah. That goes without uh, saying. Exactly. Um, okay, something else that, um, you know, requires all of these things is learning to sleep. Well, I mean, gosh, this is something that we could all do with more tips on. What what do you recommend for a good night's sleep? So good night's sleep, again, this will be very reflective how your energy levels are balanced throughout the day. In a body, body, is, body our body is incredible. Everything works together. So little imbalance on this side will create big imbalance mm. on the other side. So the sleep is incredibly important, very restorative. This is the only time our body will switch off. Um, there are some incredible supplements for sleep, but obviously the, you know, balancing your blood sugar during the day would really help. Also your bedtime routine. A lot of my patients don't really think of it. And we do actually, I don't. Mm. <laughs> you know, your little things like um, temperature in your room. Your body does not like to sleep in a hot room. Mm -hmm. You really should have room quite cold that you actually okay. want to put your blanket mm. um, on yourself. Um, what else? Obviously, the, the kind of stimulants as the television and iPads. Which yeah, what I do. We, all we know, know it. Yeah. We know it. <laughs> Little one, like, um, and a lot of my patients suffering with that. You know, when you go to sleep and you're so busy and you wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh my gosh, I need that to, I don't know, empty the dishwasher or yes, something. Yes, three times last night. Tell me, yes, how yeah. do you stop that happening? Pen and paper next to your bed. Mm. Uh, as opposed to having to switch your you know, yeah. phone on and writing, writing your mess, writing yeah. yourself emails like Brain I do sometimes right? as well. Yeah. Literally just pen and paper on your bedside table, okay. really important. Yeah. Um, one nutrient which I love with sleep, it's magnesium. Yeah. It works like magic. Okay. Really important. Late afternoon or before bedtime, really okay. good magnesium supplement. It it works nice. like magic. It really works. Really um, and any foods that we should all know about to aid good sleep? Tell you what, there's one really interesting, which I always found fascinating since I was at university. It's um, foods which contain tryptophan. Okay. So tryptophan, it's amino acid, and what it, which is particle of protein. Mm. And basically, what it does, it um, it's a precursor to this um, to the neurotransmitter called serotonin. Okay. And serotonin, it's a neurotransmitter which makes it's us happy, happy mm. but also make us uh, make us go to sleep. Oh. So foods which are high in tryptophan are perfect bedtime snack, okay. pre bedtime snack. Obviously. And, any any um, examples? Yes, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, dairy. So any kind of I like to recommend maybe a couple of spoons of uh, yogurt. Okay. Live yogurt before bedtime. Cottage cheese, very nice. Nice. Bit of a turkey slice as well. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I, I'll do a bit of pre bedtime. <laughs> Slices, sure. yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about hormones in terms mm. of feeling good for summer. I mean, that particularly for women is, you know, such 
such a key thing to, to feeling good, isn't it? So what do you, how do you, I mean, where do you even start in terms of resetting your hormones, feeling in a good place? I think it's quite important to say hormones are very easily imbalanced and we just imbalance them by living, quite frankly. Mm. We, we, you know, we live in London, we live in cities. Uh, stress is a huge hormone imbalance, if yeah. that makes sense, because a lot of my patients are not, you don't really link feeling stress into actually having really high levels of cortisol mm. in your in your bloodstream. And this is the hormone which starts messing everything yeah. around. So high levels of stress will definitely mess up our hormones. Um, being overweight as well, it's very important, again, being your healthy weight mm -hmm. because that will start messing up your hormones. Yeah. Nutrition and, and deficiencies. And, uh, sorry, I was going to say, and that's the weight for you, that's just <laughs> yes. the weight for you right? For, mm. for the weight that is that you're supposed to oh, be Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Your healthy weight. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. Nutritional deficiencies. Nutritional deficiencies, yeah. again, really important because, as I've mentioned, you know, everything in the body works together. If mm. you have one deficiency, it will become bigger, bigger yeah. over the period of time. So really important to take a good supplement and also eat very well. Yeah. Do you recommend that people should, you know, if you have the means, go and get go and get tested, see what you're deficient in? I mean, can you can you start taking supplements without kind of having blood tests and knowing what, what you might absolutely. be missing? Yeah. A lot of I mean, I'm a clinician. I work at the clinics. So I do blood. I do mm. these tests all the time. They're, they're quite expensive. Yeah, that's um, what I asked. Yeah. To have a good quality multivitamin, most ninety nine percent of my patients were always good, good quality multivitamin, mm. and perhaps some omega three okay. for hormone balancing. Okay. So good multi and some good essential fatty acids are really important for okay. women. Okay, good to know. Um, you say here supplements for gut health as well. Gut health. I mean, we could probably do an entire it's session so on that. It's, it's but, so in the that's moment. so tied into your hormones, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, supplements for gut health. Uh, probiotics would be the, the obvious one, really mm -hmm. important. You know, the beneficial bacteria to kind of imbalance your intestinal microflora. Also, fiber. It's interesting. Again, we don't yeah. eat enough fiber, but fiber feeds the good bacteria. Okay. I did not know that fiber was such a key yeah, ingredient. Fiber now we know. Okay. <laughs> um, finally. Getting the glow. I mean, really, that's what we all. Know, that's what we're all after, know, really, isn't it? But it starts kind of. Well, I mean, it starts within, doesn't it? So, what are your tips? For the glow? We're glowing from the inside out. Oh, it's such a cliche phrase, but I it, know, it, but it's it really so is. Beauty it is, yeah. starts from within. Exactly. Um, so, obviously, what you eat will. It's very, very important. Um, with regards to beauty, I like to look at the things like. Such a popular topic to talk about. Things like collagen, which contain, you know, foods which contain collagen, mm. but also pe what people underestimate are foods which um, nutrients which support the collagen production mm -hmm. because our body will produce the collagen yeah. itself. So you kind of want to hit it from both sides. So collagen containing foods, it's all the oily fish, you have some egg yolks, so eggs are fantastic for mm. collagen as well. But then, you know, good old vitamin C, which really stimulates the collagen production, is fantastic. Okay. So all your citruses. And um, a grapefruit is actually a higher yeah. level of vitamin C than lemon. Okay. Really? I didn't know that yet. I want to find the reason for it. <laughs> um, okay. And um, I mean, can we talk about the outside part of it? I mean, any treatments, you know, products for things that we could be doing on the outside to aid that glare as well? Sure. I mean, I, I can tell you from my personal experience, I love vitamin C again, yeah. very protective against um, free radicals and, you know, from, um, from the sunshine, mm. from the um, UV rays as well. Bit of a hyaluronic acid as well. Mm -hmm. There's this amazing, oh, I will tell you a new one, um, yeah. amazing nutrient which I'm just about to launch as well um, to take internally. It's mm -hmm. called astaxanthin, okay. which is a, it's a red pigment algae. And that's actually really interestingly what makes flamingos pink. Cool. They, they actually get born being, they're born being grey. Yes. Then, while eating the algae, they become yes, pink. Yes, I knew that. Okay, but yeah, it's yeah. been shown to have these amazing antioxidant properties. So obviously, Important for immunity, cool. but fantastic for skin health. And they just start using that nutrient as a topic for skin. And there's amazing research supporting that. That's cool. It's really interesting. Remind me the name? Uh, Astaxanthin. Astaxanthin. Know, okay, cool. All right. We're, we're going to chat about that afterwards. <laughs> um, finally, for getting the glow, um, your hero supplement is Gold Super Blend. It is because obviously it contains collagen. It, it contains all the nutrients which you need for collagen production as well, all the antioxidants. It has a bit of a protein which you need for skin maintenance. Um, so yeah, it's a great project. Yeah, that's the one. All right, thank you so much. Gabriella. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, me. I literally feel so armed with good <laughs> tips, good knowledge. So thank you so much. It was thank so you. lovely to have you. Um, for more information about Gabriella and uh, for some of her amazing tips, then visit gpnutrition.com. Now from getting the glow inside to outside, makeup artist Ashley Days aka Ashley's Edit, who is renowned for her easy to follow five minute makeup tutorials. She's sharing an everyday gorgeous look you're going to love. Hi Sheer Looks, my name is Ashley Days. I'm a makeup artist and I'm here to take you through a five minute everyday glowing makeup.
So I always start with a lightweight moisturizing cream. I am a lover of skin treatments and richer moisturizers, but I tend to use them in the evening to get to work over my skin during the night time and then go in with a super lightweight moisturizer underneath makeup. Because I like to keep my makeup routine quite quick and easy and I want it to last quite well throughout the day, anything too rich in terms of skincare is not the best base for your makeup. So a nice lightweight moisturizer will work wonders. Next up is concealer and I'm gonna use a creamy concealer just around the eyes and then anywhere that you feel like you've got discoloration on the skin. So I get a little bit on the top lip and then I've got a blemish there. Now I'm gonna use this as my concealer and my foundation, which is what I tend to do most days if I'm just keeping it nice and simple. When applying your concealer or your foundation, always use a stipple in motion, so like this, pressing into the skin. And you want the majority of the coverage in the center of the face working outwards. So by the time it gets to the jawline and it just blends seamlessly then into the skin. We sometimes have the tendency to really rub with foundation and concealer, but pressing it in is key just to get that second skin finish and to not disturb the coverage. You don't want too much product on the eyelid, but a little bit of excess that's left on the brush is completely fine. Once we've evened out that base, next up is bronzer. I like to take my bronzer all over the skin just to create a nice sun-kissed finish. So if you were to imagine you are walking around in the sunshine, that is where the sun would naturally hit and that is where the placement of your bronzer should be. So always buffed into the hairline. So right across the forehead, down through the center of the nose and then over onto the cheekbones. So more of a sculpted finish like under the cheekbones works better more of an evening I find if you want that more contoured finish. And don't forget to catch if you're wearing your hair up behind the back of your ears, just so that it blends naturally into the neck. And then once we are bronzed, we're gonna go for brows. Now for brows, I like to use a couple of products. I use a brow pencil, just to add a little bit of fullness where I've got gaps and then a brow gel to hold them in place. You never wanna take it through the whole brow. So never just start at the front and take it all the way through at the same kind of thickness. You want to just fill in, I call them my baldy bits, wherever your baldy bits are is where you want to fill in. So mine especially is this lower part here. And then I just like to use the spoolie end of the brush and just soften that pencil through the brow. Next up is a brow gel, which not everyone needs, but if you've got slightly fuller brows like mine and they tend to point in all directions, my hair, I wake up that one's going one way, one's going the other. So I need to make sure that I really tame them in place. So I'll set them with a brow gel. And this is a clear brow gloss, which just holds everything in place and makes them look a little bit more tame. And once your brows are done, I then move on to lashes and I just use a mascara and a lash curler. So again, keeping it super simple. My lashes are naturally so straight that I find without a lash curler, mascara on its own is definitely not enough. So making sure you get right to the base of the lash with the lash curler and you get such an open eye finish. Next up is mascara and I'm just using a nice lengthening natural mascara that's not too thick. I find for a daytime you just want something that's going to individualise and lengthen those lashes and give you that nice kind of lifted eye look without looking too heavy. I also like to avoid the bottom lashes of a daytime um, unless I'm wearing liner and a full eye makeup. The mascara is in place. To finish, we do lips and cheeks, and I always do them together because I usually use whatever I use on the lips, I'll use on the cheeks for a quick everyday glow. So I've got a lip pencil, nice natural lip pencil, and a lip balm, and I'm going to take the pencil all the way around. It's a few shades darker than my natural lip tone, which is ideal for a natural finish. You want something that's going to look like your lips, but just a little bit fuller. So this is like a nice rosy nude, and then I'm going to blend that in with some lip balm. My lips are really dry at the moment. I'm also then gonna just take that balm to the tops of my cheekbones just to get that nice healthy sheen. And then once that's in place, I then actually finish with a little bit of pencil. I'll do the cheeks in the reverse as you will see. I'll put balm on first 
and then a bit of pencil so the pencil's got something to blend into to give you a nice creamy like cheek color and then you never have to worry about finding a blush to match your lip because your lips and cheeks are just the same products again that stipple emotion pressing into the skin and then i always take a little bit of the filler onto my nose and then to finish i use my bronzer brush but with nothing on it and i just take it down the center of my face where i want to mattify just to take away any excess shine i like to keep the glow on the outer side of the face but then really just mattify through the center and that is it a quick five minute glowing everyday makeup i hope you've enjoyed we're going to link all the products that i've used in the show notes and speak soon So that is it for today. Thank you so much to Gabriella, Ashley, Lou, Tor, Sherry, Patricia, Polly, and Georgina. On the next show, Olivia is here with a very exciting wardrobe challenge from Stylus Anna Bromelow, interior trends from Laura Stevenson, delicious food from Summer, and lots more. You won't want to miss it. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below, give us a thumbs up, and do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Bye-bye.